also a lot of people have been sending me this video CEO who gave all his employees a minimum $70,000 paycheck thriving six years later there's a lot of videos about Dan Price which is the CEO there referencing here now Dan Price he's a figure he really really likes to stir the pot if you go to his LinkedIn um, the first thing that you might think is that a lot of what he says lines up with what I say. Three companies giving shout outs to employees who missed the birth of their child to take a work call or a work trip. You know, missing the most important moments of your life for work isn't a flex, it's just sad, right? And so a lot of what Dan Price says aligns with what I say. However, I really like Dan. I want to believe that Dan is legit. The question that just comes to mind for me is, is his business thriving because he lowered his salary and gave all of his workers a raise? Or is his business thriving because of all of the media attention that he gets? And it's hard for me to say, honestly, I don't know. I don't have, I don't have the bookkeeping records. I can't really know those things. I've actually reached out to Dan multiple times. I've messaged him on Instagram. I've emailed him. I've emailed his company um, to no avail. I thought he would be a great fit for my channel and he never responded. I did find out, however, that he does have a $30,000 to $40,000 speaking fee, which is fine, whatever, right? I, I can't pay that. And I don't have the reach that Fox News or CBS or whatever, I don't have like the millions and millions of viewership reach kind of places that these media outlets have. So obviously he's probably not going to come onto my channel. It is what it is. He's got to make money somehow. So having said that, I'd still like to have him on the channel, but obviously I can't afford to pay that. So Dan, if you ever see this video, I'd love for you to have you on the channel. And I'd really like to pick your brain about how things have been working since you've done this. It's a very, I think, selfless thing to do to lower your own salary to raise everyone else's. However, there are a few things that come to mind, such as CEOs make money outside of salary. They make money in the form of equity, expensable assets that drive cash flow, stocks, speaking fees, plenty of other ways that he makes money. So it, to lower your own salary to raise everyone else's is, is honestly, yeah, you're, you're missing out on some money, but what you're also missing out on is having to pay income tax on a million dollars, which is what your salary originally was and if you can make money without having to be taxed on it such as buying expensable assets which i don't know if he does any of this i can't say but just know when ceos take a pay cut it's really not that big of a deal because they make money in the form of bonuses stocks assets all those other things like uh, bobby from blizzard right they cut his salary as part of his agreement to continue being ceo in exchange for if he brings the stock up he gets a huge bonus in the form of Blizzard stock. Salary was really irrelevant there. And what most businesses do anyways is try to business expense as much as they can so they don't have to pay tax. Now again, I'd be curious to know if his business is thriving because of what he did and the media attention that it drove him. So people see what he did and they're like, wow, you're great. And they choose to use his company over other companies. Or if his company has just gotten better than other companies and his workers are doing great work making a truly innovative app making something that's truly unique because he's the CEO of Gravity Payments here, which is a payment processor for small businesses. This isn't a, a, a very uncommon thing, right? You go buy something, they have a little screen, you fill it out, pay, stick your card in the screen and then ask for a tip and you flip it back around. Like there's a lot of places that have small payment gateways that they use. And so Gravity Payments here, it, maybe it's a fantastic product. I don't really know, but it's not the only one out there is what I'm saying. Is his business thriving because his uh, product is unique or is his business thriving because people choose to use this processor because of what they think of Dan and what he did? I don't, I don't know. Does it really matter? I, I don't know. I think it's food for thought really because if I was Dan, which I'm not, Dan, if you're watching this, uh, I would think to myself, wow, this is really driving a lot of media attention. I'm really doing the radical thing and raising everyone's wages while lowering my salary and that's gonna look fantastic. And everyone's like, wow, you're so selfless. Man has a heart of gold. If you look at these comments here, that's what everyone says. But you know, probably they don't realize that CEOs make a lot of money in other ways. I'm sure Dan is doing just fine. I have, I mean, $40,000 speaking fee. I'm sure Dan is doing A-OK -okay and he makes probably more money now than he did than before he cut his salary down to raise everyone else's. And so 
Again, if I was Dan, it would just reinforce me to keep being radical and keep being very outspoken against what regular CEOs do because that drives attention, that drives polarity, that drives, it's marketing. It's guerrilla marketing 101. And from this standpoint, if Dan is using it for that, I think it's pretty genius. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He, he knows saying against the status quo of what regular CEOs do will bring backlash or media attention, which he then can use to boost his business marketing. So that's really kind of where I'm at with it. Now, I, again, I don't know any of these things. I haven't seen the paperwork, but they're just things, just things to think about. Like, I really want to believe that Dan is legitimate and he just does these things out of the goodness of his heart. And that's what we all want to believe, really. And I can't say that he's not doing it, and I can't say that he is doing it. But I want to, to, to lean towards the side of he's giving everyone a raise because he wants people to be able to have a living wage and all that stuff. And he cares about them, and not just because it drives him a lot of media attention. He's been in a lot of interviews besides this one, but for some reason everyone saw this one and not all the other interviews. I've made a video like this before talking about him, but not in this sort of detail. Because I got so many emails about this guy. Like, I'm like, yeah, I know, but there are other ways to make money. He's got a $40,000 speaking fee. He gets a lot of media attention. Uh, is his product fantastic? Or people, they just use it because they see what he did and they want to support him. I, I don't, I don't know. And these are questions that I'm, I'm curious about and maybe questions that other people haven't thought. I'd still like to have Dan on the show. I'd still like to talk to him. This isn't me throwing shade or anything like that. Maybe it's a combination of the two. Maybe his business is doing great because of what he did and now his employees are working harder and better and they're happier making a better product and because of all the media attention that he gets. But Dan does sort of have like a cult following. If you go to his comment section on LinkedIn, you'll find a few types of people. People that absolutely agree, people that absolutely disagree, people that are on the fence, and people that are just like basically calling him socialist and all this stuff, right? But again, this all drives clicks, this all drives attention, this all drives back to his, his company Gravity Payments. If you go to his website, this is what it looks like. Um, if you go to About Gravity, you know, they love to talk about Dan here. They love to talk about the 70K story. Uh, but when you go to services, they look fairly standard for the industry. Uh, partnerships, stories and press, this is about how their, their product is being used. I've never used it. I don't really know much about his, his service, really. But it seems like people like it. Um, it's just, there is a lot of emphasis on what this CEO has done, what Dan has done for his employees, you know, by having dedicated pages on his website. And I think that's just kind of what he's known for. I mean, I don't know, there's Square, there's all these other small business vendors out there that are less traditional like, like this, that are probably, I don't know, m more hip. But I'd say overall, a lot of the things that Dan puts on his page, I think to myself, I've said that too, and everyone just says, grow up, boy, you're just a dumb millennial. Like, I've, I've said this, like, exact thing before. Like, he posted this two days ago. I made an entire video about how don't, don't give up life for work, you know? And if you, if you have the money to be able to do that, don't, don't work overtime for no reason, you know? At least get compensation for it. He says a lot of the same things I do, right? Tip minimum wage has gone up 0%. CEO pay 528%. But what does CEO pay mean? Is, is he talking about salary? Is he talking about stocks and bonuses and investor money? What What is CEO pay? Like, we really need to break that apart, right? Was watching Shark Tank and one of the sharks said they hate when employees put up pictures of the kids at their desk because it makes the office look cluttered and ugly. I think this sums up a lot of things, right? I think I agree with that too. Companies, workers are so lazy. They'll never want to go the extra mile. Also companies, you finished all your work ahead of everyone else. Here's more work to do with no extra pay. I've ranted about that for entire videos. What's the point of working hard and just to get rewarded with more work and a nice pat on the back? It looks like you get to keep your job today, son, type type deal. Like Nobody likes that. Um, he does go into like more political things, talking about unemployment benefits, and he starts talking about politics a little bit. I don't get too much involved with that stuff because that just starts arguments. People just want to fight for the sake of fighting. No one actually wants to go there to try and share their viewpoint. People just want to fight and call other people names. So I, I don't really get into that stuff. But here's one of the best things about him doing this overall is that his employees seem happy. His company seems happy. In fact, they're so happy that they bought Dan Price a Tesla, which he likes to repost every anniversary. 
pretty much about how his employees love what he did for them so much and so they bought him a tesla and never forget i don't know it, it kind of seems like he's pushing you know remember what i did remember what i did how long can i stay in the media and keep this relevant i, I don't know that's sometimes that's kind of the vibe i get uh, maybe i'm wrong in Ohio factory raised $13 to $18 staff grew 36% profit, doubled the extra labor, helped them fill more orders. So, you know, that sounds really nice, but then Dan always, it seems finds a way to bring it back to what he did. After I doubled minimum wage at our company, our revenue tripled. Is that, is it because you doubled the minimum wage or is it because you started getting a bunch of media attention? that wanted to use your company because they were happy about what you did. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. There are examples that he gives, like, this is fantastic, and then he kind of brings it back to himself. When I did this at my company, this happened, and maybe he just wants to reinforce that, but it's a little bit much, I guess. If you go to Dan's page here and you read about it, he, he talks about um, how he doesn't really care about money. Uh, right here. As I told Entrepreneur Magazine, I never intended to make a lot of money or really any. I was really upset at this industry for the way they were treating my clients and I just wanted to blow the whole thing up. So Dan shaped gravity on a different set of values not normally seen in the workplace. Honesty, transparency, and responsibility. That sounds good. These simple values have made Dan and Gravity Team a trusted name in credit card processing. Today, ind independent businesses across all 50 states use gravity to save them millions in fees and hours in frustration by making it easy and simple them for them to accept payments so his mission is to create a world where values-based companies reshape the economy so business stops being about making the most money possible so that's one of the things that's not really it's not really feasible like it's <laughs> you'd like to think that it is and business is about purpose like he says he wants leaders to recognize that business should be about purpose service and making a difference but not everyone's job is about purpose service and and making a difference sometimes a job is just about making the most amount of money possible so that you can go do the things that you enjoy in life and it is what it is and that's how i'd like to think about every job that i've ever worked for someone else at it's just about money they're trying to pay me the least amount of money possible and i'm trying to raise my salary to the most amount of money possible and there's this back and forth because it's all about profit at the end of the day it'd be really nice if everyone thought their job was about purpose service and making a difference but i just don't really think that's that's the reality of things is it wrong for someone else out there who disagrees with dan uh, about businesses should be about purpose and service and they just want to make money is that wrong again i just don't think every job out there can fulfill purpose service and making a difference just by raising someone's minimum wage like it sounds nice it is nice it is a good thing and these employees are making more money happier i hope doing nice things doing good work he seems to give them, you know, a good work-life balance. He, he lets them take time off if you want to volunteer at a charity and stuff. Uh, we give $500 a year to donate to nonprofits of every employee's choice. I, again, that sounds nice, but nice little tax write-off for Dan here. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever gone to, like, a fast food place, and when you get to the ordering thing after you've ordered, they're like, would you like to donate a dollar or whatever roundup to donate to this charity? The reason that these companies do this is because it's a tax write-off with your money. They get to claim your money and use that as a charity donation. And then they get reduced taxes at the end of the year because of you donating to charity. Again, there are just all of these things that a lot of people don't know about that businesses can do to mess with their money. But I think him taking a cut to raise everyone else's makes it seem like a, like a zero sum game. Like if I have less, they can have more. But in reality, it's not quite like that. You can make money in other places. And so if he doesn't make a million dollar salary, the, the tax on that is like 39% or something. Why would he want that? So let's lower my salary and then I'll, I'll make money in other ways that I can business expense and do all these other things. Like, I don't know if, if Dan's mind goes that to that place, but I know there are CEOs that love what you would call the loopholes, but they're not loopholes. Anyone can use them. They just know about them and you don't. And that's the difference. And so, so some companies and some CEOs just take that to the absolute extreme and they want, you know, to dodge as many taxes as possible. Tax evasion is illegal. As you know, tax avoidance is perfectly legal. Lowering your overall income tax burden that you have to pay at the end of the year is perfectly legal. Tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion is not. Companies love tax avoidance. They do anything they can to avoid that. And lowering your own salary to raise everyone else's lowers income tax for Dan. 
I just feel a little bit torn. And I haven't been able to talk to Dan to get his side of the story on things. So you guys see where I'm coming from now? It seems really nice. It seems really good. I just, Josh being Josh here, I just, I can't not be a little suspect. It's, it almost seems a little too good. You, you know what I mean? But I want to believe, but I really, I want to believe. And Dan is welcome to reach out to me and talk to me and come on the show. And, um, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. Honestly, I'm open to being wrong, but having run my own business and having looked at the tax laws and having seeing how all these CEOs do things like I, I can read tax code just like anyone else and lowering your tax burden and raising profits without actually having to pay taxes on profits because you manipulate your money in special ways. Like I've read about all that. Other people haven't and they don't know about it. And so it just seems like the goodness of his heart. And he gets all this marketing and gets all this other stuff from it. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I, I really, there are a lot of people that should be paid more money that work at their jobs. And if those CEOs lower their salary to raise everyone else's salary, would it work? Would they get lots of media attention, which would then drive customers to that company because of the selfless, genuine giving authenticity of the CEO raising their workers? Or would they just do more work and produce more and somehow that would drive profits to be higher? I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard to say. But there, like, again, most of the stuff on LinkedIn, he says, we totally align on. So like, I keep hearing CEOs, they need workers back in the office for, for productivity. What's going to motivate to work harder, a ping pong table at the office or the chance to avoid two hours in rush hour traffic. Uh, how I learned to be a better boss. I was a bad CEO. Years ago, I found a McDonald's training handbook on the desk of an employee named Rosita. Turns out she was in training. I don't know. He, Dan talks about himself a lot and makes these really long posts reminding everyone of what he's done. I don't, I don't know if it's because he, he wants to stay relevant or if it's because he truly believes in what he did and that will fix. We just cut all our salaries and raise everyone else's. Uh, who knows? Who knows what he's thinking when he writes these things, but it kind of, I, I don't know. I, I see him needing to stay relevant to, to keep his company in the spotlight, to keep people coming to his company. Like here's one that I totally agree with. It's National Intern Day. Pay your interns. If you can't afford to pay someone, you don't deserve their labor, right? If he's going to piss off everyone in India with that. If you get the Sunday scaries, that's not your fault. That's your job's fault. I mean, see, like here's one of the things where it's like, no one is forcing you to go to a job you hate. Maybe you have yourself in a position where you can't quit but there is choice there is choice you can quit it will suck if you have no money and no place to go right and so like that, that's the argument that you'll see on the other side of that but it might not be your job's fault maybe it's your fault that you picked a crappy company to work at right so like where's the accountability on on the other side i don't think companies can just solve every problem by just giving everyone more money like it would be it would be nice to raise everyone's wage so that they can live and buy houses and do all this stuff but you can't control people's spending habits as I personally know from giving money to my family, you can give them all the money in the world, but if they just blow it, it doesn't matter how much you give them. So it's really nice that the emphasis is, is put on to, to improving the workers' lives. But again, you can't control their spending habits. And just because you give them more money doesn't mean they're going to have a happier or better life because they might just blow all their money and not be responsible with it. What I'm definitely trying not to do is to come on here and make it seem like I'm upset because he wouldn't come on the channel or anything like that because I, I'm trying to be in in the middle right I have assumptions both both ways like he could have done that and that's nice or he could be doing this that has more nefarious undertones to it but I don't know I just like to talk to him honestly Dan I can't pay your forty thousand dollar speaking fee and I don't have the reach that these news outlets do so I can't you know I your time is valuable right like you need money you got to make money somehow right so it is what it is. Uh, he seems like a nice guy. It seems like a family-oriented company. I'm not trying to make this in a negative light. I'm just trying to understand everything, maybe. But that's just me. I, I come off as suspect to anyone. It's hard for me to trust anyone. When it, when it seems too good to be true, it usually is 99% of the time. And I'm not saying that Dan is faking it at all, because he's it's just very rare and that's why he's getting so much attention from all of this say but dan i'd love to talk to you i'd love to have you on the show and i'd love to see how you doing this has really driven revenue to your business from your workers being happier and more productive and not so much from you doing this and getting media attention that drives customers to your company maybe it's both nothing wrong with that but 
just curious. Anyways, guys, that's my thoughts, my honest thoughts. Hopefully, I didn't piss anyone off. I'm sure I did. I do every video. That's not my point. Uh, my point is just to be cautious, suspect, but that's me. I've met a lot of people who have held themselves up here for doing something nice, but then they turn out to be jerks. And I don't want that to be Dan. So don't, don't get me wrong. I don't want that, but that's just how I've grown up and things that I've experienced. So wouldn't put it past anyone. I was kind of nervous to make this video, if we're being honest, because I feel like everyone's going to be like, Josh, what do you mean? This is exactly what you say. He says exactly what you say. How are you, how are you being like this? Like, well, hopefully you heard my reasons and maybe you can come to an understanding. It's just food for thought. Just honestly, it's just food for thought. We're not assuming anything, but we're just thinking about all the different options. So if you enjoyed it, click subscribe. If you want to see me take on the corporate world some more, click like if you enjoyed the video or if you like what Dan did, I guess. I mean, I, I think it's nice, but I'm just suspect. Okay. Okay. That's all I got. Hope you guys have a fantastic Friday. I'll see you in the next one.